Good morning, Hank. It's not Tuesday. Good morning, other less hankish people. It's probably not Tuesday for you too. So to cushion the blow, ebb the flow, bridge the gap that has been left in our internet by John's absence, many have been making stand-in videos. I do realise that the majority of those were requested. Still, like the dust cloud enclosed party crasher who can't take a hint and continually insists on playing their own mixtapes, I thought I'd join in too. I decided to dull the pain of missing John by talking about his bad points. Well, point. John Green has one problem, one unforgivable flaw, and that is that even by generous estimates, at most, he has written six books. And six books? You can read six books in like a day, right? About a year ago, I finally, like a last lost Neanderthal late to the bonfire, discovered Terry Pratchett. And Ever since, I've been reading Terry Pratchett pretty solidly. In fact, I recently found out that almost a third of the books I've read so far this year have been penned by his good self. His books secede the countable spaces and continue on, off into other, more library-ish spaces. Mr Pratchett has the ability to keep you in books like a violently persistent librarian, perhaps one endowed with ape-like strength and a penchant for bananas. Mr Green? Well, you'll have hardly started gobbling up his creations before you're suddenly bereft. I, however, have been sent to YouTube to solve this problem. Unfortunately, as my John Green novel Appearinator seems to be somewhat less effective than I'd originally hoped, and because apparently we're not allowed to manacle authors to their desks, keep them in a perpetual state of novel writing, and deny them the love of their yetis, Henrys, and newborn baby Alices, I am here to offer an alternative. As such, I come to you, fellow nerdfighters, unsated after your brilliant yet petite John Green appetizer, and offer you the standard formula. If you liked John Green, you might might like. Let's go in publication order and start with Looking for Alaska. If you liked Looking for Alaska, you might like Charm and Strange by Stephanie Cohen. This book has boarding scores, it has traumatic pasts and uncertain futures. It also, as the title might have given away to you, has geeky physics references. If you loved Alaska, I think you'll also love Drew. If you liked An Abundance of Catherines, you might like Boy Proof by Cecile Castellucci. There was something about Colin that reminded me of this book's protagonist, Victoria, or Egg as she prefers to be called. Although she doesn't have a string of 19 Catherines lined up behind her, I feel that in both their stories, through exploring romance and the lack thereof of it, they really learn how to like and be themselves. If you liked Paper Towns, which is my personal favourite, you might like Lost at Sea by Brian O'Malley. That's a name you might recognise, Brian is very well known as the creator of Scott Pilgrim. The lesser known Lost at Sea is, like that, a graphic novel, but standalone. And just absolutely beautiful in considering ideas of each other. Also, road trips. Lots of road trips. If you liked Will Grayson, Will Grayson, you might like Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. Because it would just be a cop out to recommend David Leverfan's other books. As well as this book also considering concepts of sexuality and first boyfriends and girlfriends, something I love about this book and that I feel Winterson and Green share in common is this odd ability to have books that are essentially about topics that are quite dark, sad, and serious, and yet pen them in novels that are brimming with humour. Finally, if you like The Fault in Our Stars, and really, do you know anyone who actually doesn't like The Fault in Our Stars? If you like The Fault in Our Stars, you might like The Heart and the Bottle by Oliver Jeffers. Yes, this is a picture book, perhaps shelved in the three-year-old section of your local bookstore, but I still think it, to some extent, through very different media, manages to communicate something similar up there on that tertiary level of language. Ideas about being, about feelings that don't fit comfortably within the words we try and pour them into, about infinities that only last a handful of pages. So there, some reading for you while you await John's next book, and some video for you while you await his triumphant return to the Tube Spectacular. Hope you've enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what's your favourite John Green novel and what you think of my recommendations. Do you have any recommendations of your own? I'm always keen to snap up authors who are said to have a greenish air. Other than that, I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys.